Anyway, episode 2, Disorientation Day. <laughs> the girls begin their first semester at the esteemed High Guardian Academy. First day of school, a brand new environment, new people, new challenges. It's a prime opportunity for characterization, world building, and setting up the journeys of each of our four main heroines. Now at its core, as a setting, any type of school is the most basic, boring, and lame place you can possibly pick. And that's exactly why it's used so often, especially in the medium High Guardian Spice is trying to emulate. Everybody has gone to school at some point, so everyone can relate to the characters at least on that level. Everybody knows how things work, from the classes to the administration, it's just immediately clear what the setting is all about and what's happening without need for excess exposition. If you pick school as the main stage for your story, as a writer, you've already placed half your workload on autopilot. It is impossible to fuck up something so well established as this. And yet, somehow, in classic High Guardian Spice fashion, this show manages to make even the simplest thing needlessly confusing. Today I've got metal smithing first, and then something called the everything hours. Oh, I've got everything hours too. Where's a uh, ethics class? It's in the... Wait, are you sure you're in it with me? I'm sure we... Oh, no, we're not. My schedule says I have ethics on Wednesdays. I'm not sure why I thought we... Well, it makes sense that we're in different classes since we're on different tracks. Sage is here to master magic. So cool, Sage. You're gonna break some hearts. Thank you. And Rosemary, you're on the warrior track, like me. And Time's on both tracks, and she's got that fairy woods background, so, you know, no two guardians have the same schedule. So it turns out that, for some baffling reason, all the students in the academy have a unique schedule from one another. It's the first day, and everyone is just doing whatever. Why would the school decide to hold separate classes for different students in the subjects that they all have in common? That's just blatant mismanagement of resources and time. Why are the first year, or rather first day, students even having any kind of diverging schedules in the first place? Keep in mind, this is already a very specialized, focused academy. Everyone is training to become guardians. As such, it would make more sense to begin with the unified studies. Ethics, basic combat training, history, biology of monsters and the like. And then later on specialize the students into their chosen fields. Or tracks, as they are commonly known. So the two tracks are basically the warrior and the mage. But then why does Sage attend the same warrior combat class alongside everyone else later on in the show? Episode 6 to be specific. They gave an excuse for Fime, since she is apparently both a warrior and magically inclined. So she attends spell classes together with Sage as well. But they specifically stated that Sage is purely a mage. Did the writers forget? Both episodes are written by the same people, so there's no excuse. And why doesn't Rosemary also study smithing alongside Parsley? After all, she is on the warrior track too. So even if two people are on the same specialized track, they still have further specialization within that track. Since the first day of school. Both Rosemary and Sage seem utterly baffled by all this, so they clearly haven't chosen any of their classes. Judging by the show's scattershot explanation, it seems like Parsley is the only one who actually knows how the curriculum works. And the only one who has chosen to specialize in smithing beforehand? When did she do that? How did she even do that? Why are the rest of the girls so out of the loop? Why does the academy even teach smithing? That's like if a modern military academy taught cadets how to craft assault rifles. Instead of how to handle them. None of this makes any sense. To be fair, the writing reason for all this convoluted hand wavy crap is quite simple. The show wants to justify why all the main characters are attending separate classes and aren't there to support each other, so that the writers can easily craft separate A and B plots for each of the characters in the episodes going forth. For this particular end, in this particular scene, Parsley acts as the expo dump machine, and Rosemary and Sage are the lobotomized ask men. 
It's actually a classic setup in fish out of water stories. The local person explains the details of the world and the newbies and we as the audience get to hear these details by proxy. The problem here comes from the fact that Parsley shouldn't know anything the other two don't. She can't. There is no way. They are all first day students. An easy fix for this would have been to make Parsley into an upperclassman. A senpai, if you will, who would show her new friends the ropes. That would have actually been some neat characterization for Parsley. She is already the most mentally stable out of the four heroines. So it would only make sense if she was also older than the rest. It's actually so obvious I cannot believe the writers didn't think of it. In fact, all the named characters in the story are first year students. Which is weird. For obvious reasons. I mean, whenever there's trouble, it would only make sense that the more experienced and more powerful third year students were the ones taking care of the heavy lifting. Alas, the show has other ideas. Lazy ideas. But that's a rant for later. The exposition in this show is so crude, forced and so poorly thought out that it ends up raising more questions than it answers. Moreover, it also compromises the already flimsy characterization of the cast. Let's take Rosemary for example. Should we start? I think we should give the students a minute to settle in. Waiting gives me hives. We know. Who are they? It's the Triad. They run this place. Ah, so the crone one is the headmistress. No, they all are. Sage has to explain to Rosemary how the school is governed. How does Sage know this? Heck, why doesn't Rosemary know this? It's apparently common knowledge. Is Rosemary just honestly that dumb and ignorant? She, if anyone, should be the one most in the know about the academy and the structure of the studies there. Seeing as her mother was a guardian, did Rosemary never ask her any questions about the academy? Did she not care? I'd think she would wish to know everything there is to know about the place she's been hoping to attend since forever. Especially after her mother disappeared. For Rosemary, this place is the key to finding her mother. That is her driving passion. This academy is her final link to her lost relative, who she loves with all her heart. She should be obsessed about this place. She should know its history, all the key figures, how the place operates, everything. She should have been planning her studies vigorously long before stepping foot there. Apparently not. I guess the whole swinging a sword all willy-nilly thing really is enough for her. You don't need rules when your face is rabies!